Flip Folder app is revolutionizing musical ensembles across the country using state-of-the-art connectivity technology. Visit flipfolderapp.com to see how your ensemble can improve efficiency in rehearsals and performances, save time and money, and improve musicianship. And we are live on College Band Radio, all College Band, all the time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to episode 10 of this first season uh, of us partnered with College Marching. Uh, we're up to 10, which is just crazy. Uh, everyone's here. The whole gang is here. Uh, first off, um, how's everyone doing? I don't know if we've talked since Thanksgiving. I think we've talked since Thanksgiving. I just got finished with finals. Nice. Woo! We're done for now. I just took my first one today. Nice. Woo! Um, I watched you and I lose three basketball games in a row. Woo! And then, Not woo! Yeah. woo! Yeah. Well, and then we dunked on a D3 a team. So I just that, lost Purdue, blow a 20-point lead to Miami. It could be worse. Living in yeah, Spain. Could be. Yeah, could be yeah. Worse. Could I mean, land. Jason, like, it's not like Purdue football lost to Rutgers or anything. It could be worse. I don't think you're ever going to live that down. I'm or ever, I'm ever going to live that down from you. No, no. no. You're going to be hearing about that long into the future. <laughs> but um, uh, there were a few notable stories in the college sports world, uh, the first of which being uh, the game that I think uh, we are going to dub the game of the season, our game of the season, um, which – Thank God College Game Day actually picked the right place to go. They went to Conway, South Carolina, the home of the, at the time, number 18th uh, ranked team in the country, the Coastal Carolina Chanticleers, who were supposed to be playing Liberty. Um, Liberty got COVID. That didn't happen. And um, as we all know, uh, the BYU Cougars uh, want to play everyone anywhere. anytime, any place, anywhere, except, except for uh, Washington. Ex- except for, except, yeah, except, except for, for UW. <laughs> except for UW, but, you know, it is what it is. So uh, they decided to pack their bags, fly all the way over to Conway, South Carolina, face the demons that are the teal turf, or that is the teal turf, which no one ever comes out alive from the teal turf. It's just a fact. It was a fantastic game, and Coastal ended up uh, winning uh, 22-17. As I say, I think everyone can agree that, like, uh, like I mean, having watched the game, or at least some of us watched the game, like, it was just a fun game to watch. Like, it was yeah. so entertaining. It was just an electric atmosphere. It was nicknamed uh, Mullets versus Mormons, or Mormons versus Mullets. Uh, I would love to have one of those shirts. I think they're super funny. I think it was just, like, it was just one of those crazy matchups in 2020 that obviously none of us saw coming because they just figured it out like last week. But like, it was a fun game. The energy was there. I was a little alarmed about the lack of mask wearing in the stands, but you know what? The on field <laughs> antics were there. So it was a good time, as I think we can all agree. Um, yeah, so the BYU game, I was watching that. Uh, I was particularly invested in that one um because i so i had just watched uw lose earlier in the day to stanford and i was just like okay if i'm gonna get one win it has to be this one so i was rooting for the shot to clears obviously because byu wouldn't play uw or whatever that all that drama and i it just felt like there was a lot more like there was a lot more at stake for byu than there was for coastal so that's kind of where the like Oh, like the tension about it came from, and then the end of the game was particularly dramatic. Like with the they were BYU was within like I think they said one and a half yards from scoring yep. a touchdown, winning the whole thing. And I remember watching that. That was just so much fun. Like you don't really see a lot of games like that anymore. So you know, it was fun. I'm happy that Coastal won because I was rooting for them, but it was just a good one to watch in general. I I love close games like that. They're just fun. That's how our game was. It was fun to watch kind of a tight game because I had earlier on Saturday, I watched Iowa State, which is why I'm wearing an Iowa State shirt today, um, punch their ticket to the Big 12 championship game for the first time in school history. Uh, they were playing West Virginia, and it, I was very excited about that, so I was all hyped up to watch another football game. Um, so it was good stuff. Like I also like, it's like fun to see really tight games, 
But also there's definitely something satisfying about watching your team like absolutely obliterate another team. So. I wouldn't know. <laughs> Go clones. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that either. Well, well, I do know that one time. It happened once. <laughs> but do you know what uh do you know what game is not gonna be particularly close? In fact no, it's gonna what? be it's gonna be so spread out that it's not even gonna happen. <laughs> What game is it, Craig? It's the game. It is the game. The game. But the game between Ohio State and uh, Michigan, as most of you have probably heard by now, will not be played. Um, and it, it will not be happening because of COVID, you know? Um, do we I think it's just because of COVID? Or do we think Jim Harbaugh just really wanted to keep Ohio State out of that, out of that playlist? So he was like, all right. I know we've got one guy on this team who's tested positive. <laughs> Let's just test him 300 times. And then we'll report 300 positive tests. J- Jim Harbaugh saw his chance to avoid a devastating, embarrassing loss to Ohio State. And he was like, you know what, boys? We are going to win one for this team by not playing. For, for our listeners' sake, all of this information that we have is as of Tuesday uh, when we're recording this. <laughs> So, yes. like, uh, not this coming weekend, not, like, tomorrow, but the week after that is what's called Champions Week, where, like, the one of the East is playing the one of the West, the two of the East is playing the two of the West, and so on, down through the sevens. Um, and except that if a team has missed three or more games, they are not allowed to play in the conference championship. So, right now, Ohio State's already missed two games because of COVID. So, with the, the Michigan game being canceled, all of a sudden, now that drops them below, they've they have missed a third game if that game is not played. So if I were the uh, uh, the Ohio State Athletic Director, I'd be calling every school in the Big Ten West that I haven't played yet, and I'd be trying to get them on my schedule just so I can get that. So who who could they play? There's probably one team on in the West that has a canceled game that they're still healthy and they haven't played Ohio State. I don't could it know. be Iowa? I don't have their I don't have the schedules. Wisconsin. Like, the only reason why the BYU-Coastal game happened is because BYU is not affiliated with anything, and Coastal yeah. needed a game, so that's, that's why it made why, sense. Yeah. But In the Big Ten, they said they can't play outside of their conference either, so playing another school is not going to help. So they would have to play Big Ten West um, to get somebody. But I, I do, I'm very curious to see how this plays out. Obviously, by the time this is posted, it will have already played out, but it's going to be interesting for, uh, for that. It's going to be very interesting. Speaking of games being canceled, though, in the world of basketball, we've also had a very big cancellation. Yeah, the biggest game of the season, uh, which I was extremely excited for. Number number one, Gonzaga uh, was supposed to play number two, Baylor. And, you know, games like that don't usually happen in, in preseason um, or preseason as in like non-conference games. So it was it was a pretty big thing that it was going on. Unfortunately, the game got canceled. And I think they're trying to do it again but the, I, I think they're trying to reschedule it in some sort of way um were you guys planning on watching that game at all or no i have cable I'm... i'll yeah, probably was... keep watching football until football finishes out and then i'll start transitioning to basketball i'm, I'm going to a game yeah. on wednesday and i think sunday because since we can't go to the bragging rights game I've watched a lot of basketball, honestly. Like, I watched Purdue and Valpo. I watched Mizzou. I don't remember who Mizzou was playing. Um, I'm definitely more like, I love football and I love marching band, but basketball, I feel like I have a better understanding of basketball and I just really enjoy watching basketball. Um, Obviously, especially since you and I has basketball right now and we haven't had any football year. But I think that was going to be a game I was interested to watch. So it'll be interesting, I think, just in general to see how this season shakes out because so many games are going to get canceled and we're going to see that keep happening, whether it's a big game or a small game. But I know with obviously a lot of games getting canceled with COVID being such an issue, we've all seen the ways that bands have really adapted. And a lot of that has included using kind of different formats of technology that bands didn't maybe didn't have access to in the past or had never really considered in the past. So like, what are some like different ways that, or like if you know of, especially for the alumni right now, um, that your bands have kind of been using technology this season? So in terms of technology this season, uh, with the Rutgers band, I know they, I mean, the Rutgers band for the most part hasn't really been active this season. Um, they, they posted a few videos, you know, those kind of, I guess those collages of like people with their different parts. 
it's it's just it's a very interesting world because there's so much had to happen so quickly for bands to figure it out. So I know I know um Jason and Annabelle, I know you guys and Hannah, you too, you all your bands all actually were active this season. Talk about what you guys did, how how you guys kind of utilize different different bits of technology to keep kind of things safer and better and I think definitely for us we've been using or we've been re- relying on Google Drive and Zoom a lot more than we would in a normal season all of our leadership switched over to Zoom or we did we figured out how to do it virtually or socially distanced um and Google Drive has really been awesome for getting music out to people um my band so yeah Mizzou we've, we've been in person a lot this semester until recently so we always use a, an app called UDB um and we use that for our drill to say you know where we are in the field and this year we've updated to pro um which also tracks our attendance it's very fancy it's gold and it's our colors me and Jason's <laughs> colors um but that's been nice because um, you can even like upload a picture of yourself. And so like it shows everyone's heads, like where you are on the field. Um, but that way, like, it's usually one of our directors goes up to everyone and he see and, you know, he sees who's there. So that's nice because it uses like your location. Um, and then like Hannah said, we've been using a lot of like Google Drive and Dropbox. And, and now we're on Zoom um, since we had to go online. But it's definitely really helpful. Um, because technology, it don't, like it also makes it a lot easier, but it's a lot safer with COVID. Because an example, like for music, um, you're not having to like touch music and pass it out. It's all like on your own device for most schools, um, and so like it just helps keep the spread down. We usually have like um, on our course homepage, our directors will post like all of our drill and all of our music, and a lot of the times, like we still print out our drill and our music this year like we were as safe as we could with like gloves in the library and everything but um like all the music you could look at online we don't have anything like ultimate robot yet but um hope maybe we'll get there in the future we'll see it's becoming a thing so maybe we'll probably get on top of it eventually i love it i know i know going like all the way back way before covid um back when like technology was first just being introduced into the kind of band world i remember um Ohio State, they had uh, they had an initiative where they they raised some crazy amount of money to outfit. I think their entire I think it was like no, it was to outfit their entire band with iPads that had like I think they had like straps for it so they could just kind of have it with them. That way they no longer had to print out their music. They didn't have to print out drill. And so like this was like way before it was common to have all that stuff. I think it must have been probably at least ten years ago. I'd say, but um. But you know, there's there's been so many advances. I know um, Rutgers to get out music. What we used to do was uh, we used Dropbox, and it was so clunky. And because I mean, first of all, just trying to navigate an app like Dropbox isn't easy. But then then you're like, oh, you've got the director counting down. You're like, oh, we're 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 going. Get back to your set. You're trying to like flip through the app, just trying to find it. And it was such a hassle. Eventually, we switched to Google Drive. Which just made it like a little easier, but I mean, you're still running into the same issues, and it was just such a pain. But we had my junior year, we had a, a change in directors, and then when we did that, we also brought in UDB. So it definitely, uh, it definitely made it a lot easier to use. You know, instead of now needing to carry around a separate like flip folder, or you have your flip folder with your music, you have like a separate flip folder of like drill and whatnot, and then it's just. You don't need that anymore. You just you just have it on your phone. I was uh, I was gonna say from a Maryland standpoint. So they started UDB. Um, I'm trying to think. It was uh, it was my senior year. They started using UDB. But the majority of stuff that we do um, that we have is either we just still have the paper charts, or um, for those that have Canvas uh, and have um, uh, Elms or I, I don't know if they're synonymous or, or if that's a Maryland specific thing, but yeah, they're, basically they're like, all like course management systems. Right. Yeah, 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 exactly. All of our charts were on there. So I know that there's now uh, more of an encouragement to use your phones as flip folders instead of using actual flip folders so that you can uh, conserve and save paper and all uh, and such. But that's kind of the thing that, that we've used uh, if anything. Um, and I know, I know UDB's helped because uh, it's, you know, instead of actually having like the, you know, like 
the mini cards um, that that say you know like where your movements are. Um, everything's on the app, so you can just use the app. And um, again, conserving paper is a really good thing. I think that's what a lot of drum cores use too. Like I think yeah. they're all basically UDB at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's ultimate drill book, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then, but then, but then, so to uh, to to kind of um deal with the like the music distribution problem though, um because I know a lot of a lot of uh different different people, their different schools have their different things, their different systems. Uh, Maryland uses their just normal course management system, mm -hmm. like Alex just said. Um, and Rutgers, I know we, uh, like I said before, we use Google Drive and whatnot. Um, there have also been advancements on that front, um, where there has been a company called Flip Folder App, who has uh, gone out and basically made made an app where you just you have your music set up there on your phone, and the director, I, I believe, changes it can like choose what song it goes to, and it just opens up to that. Um, so you don't have to fiddle around with anything. He wants you to go to a specific page. You can set that. It's a very, yeah. it's a very nice thing. It saves a lot of time of like you know just waiting for everyone to scroll through. Prevents and people being like, music. I have it memorized, right? Yeah, Craig, Craig, that's a hundred percent true. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, for the podcast was actually big news for us. So um, uh, Marcus uh, over at Flip Folder App, he was um, the guy who started it off. He uh, used to march in the University um, of Pitt, uh, 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 their marching band of which we had a couple members on a, pre a couple episodes ago um, to talk about their experiences in the Pitt band. But he um, he started the app, and now the Pitt band is using it. Other bands are using it around the country, and they wanted to partner with us, so they're now an official sponsor of of, of College Band Radio, which is just insane to think that that someone uh, wants to sponsor this podcast, just an idea that we had over quarantine. Um, and now it's turned into this. Uh, so uh, we uh, were able to uh, talk with Marcus and and uh, Michael uh, over at College Marching, who's, who's been on a few episodes here, uh, to talk about how the partnership came to be and talk about talk more about the app. And um, and yeah, so it, it was it was a pretty lengthy interview, but we wanted to make sure that that, you know, this is our this is our now official sponsor of the podcast. We wanted to make sure that we that we gave him the time to talk about this amazing uh, app that he created, and hopefully other marching bands around the country will use it. So we hope you enjoy this interview. And welcome back to our main segment of this uh, of this tenth episode of our first season of College Band Radio with uh, College Marching. Uh, today with us we have uh, someone very special, a uh, uh, very very special guest who is um, uh, actually going to be partnering up with us, sponsoring the podcast, uh, Marcus of Flip Folder App. Uh, first off, Marcus, how are you doing? I'm doing good, thanks. Uh, things are going pretty well. I uh, spent a lot of time just speaking with band directors and other ensemble directors to make sure that we got good solutions for them during COVID. Uh, but I'm happy and safe, and uh, things are about as good as they can be right now. So I hope everybody else is the same. Yeah, well, that's awesome. Um, so, so we wanted to start this off by kind of um, first off, getting to know you a little bit better and how, and I know that we've talked, you know, pre-pod and, and previously before this, and we've talked about this, but, um, what's your background in, in music and or marching band and, and how did, how did Flip Folder App get started for you, uh, at Pitt, um, since, since, uh, since, since I know you're an alumni of the, of the University of Pitt marching band? Sure. Yeah. So, um, yeah, as you said, I was from Pitt. Um, I graduated last December in 2019. Um, and yeah, so the, the app got started um, my sophomore year uh, in the Pitt band. Uh, they were, Pitt was kind of doing hybrid electronic uh, music. So they had some people using paper flip folders and they had some people using smartphones on their instruments. And at the time I was a user of paper flip folders um, because I did not like the experience that we had on phones, trying to find your music with gloves on, battery life, you name it, like all, all the problems that you have when you think about uh, switching to using a phone. Um, so you know, later that year, uh, the band director let us know that like the following year we were going to go fully electronic. There was not going to be any uh, paper music as an option. Um, so I decided, you know, I was a computer science and music composition major. So I decided to kind of merge those two things and created an app. Um, and there's lots of cool things this app does, but the kind of big thing that we started with was the band director can just select a song on his phone and it will just come up on your device with the music selected for your part and uh, and you don't really have to do anything most of the time you don't even have to touch your phone it just comes up and it's ready for you 
Um, so we've added lots of things on top of that since then, things like uh, shared notation. So you can kind of uh, share, have one person write the notes for a single part, for example, and have that shared with everybody who has that same part. Um, we've added, you know, lots of battery life save, uh, saving features and, uh, you know, just many quality of life things that uh, you wouldn't even think about with, with sort of the initial switch. So uh, we took the idea of just <clears throat> putting music on a phone and just use the features of a phone, the connectivity features, uh, the display features to make it just a better experience altogether and not necessarily just a replacement to, to paper music. Now, now, was the idea for you originally to um, just keep it inside of Pit, inside of the band, or eventually were you hoping to expand it, bring it to other colleges, other universities, or possibly even high school or concert bands or anything of the like? Yeah, I mean, so to be honest with you, I had basically no direction for it at first. I was just, it was just cool and Pitt liked it. Uh, and I was, I said from the very beginning, I'd be happy if Pitt was the only band that used it. It was never about just like selling it or anything. Um, but yeah, that, that, uh, that year that the app was made, Pitt just used it for that whole year. And I did actually have other bands reaching out uh, just because college band directors are, they, they, they talk, they talk with each other. Um, and uh, I was not willing at that point to sell it to them because I wanted to make sure it was going to work. And I Wanted, while I had kind of, and me being in the pit band, I wanted to make sure that I fixed any of the problems that you run into that you can only really ever figure out by using it. Um, so once that was done, the following year, uh, I opened it up to uh, 10 bands um, across the United States to, to give it a try. And uh, those bands really liked it. And this year we've got, we've got a, a good number more um, to, to use the app. And uh, it's, been, it's been great and people have really enjoyed it. Uh, and, and to be honest, there's actually some things that we've done specifically, as I was saying, for COVID uh, with remote music education, remote music learning that a lot of bands have been enjoying this year. So Yeah, I can imagine it would be really useful because I know I've been in the scenario at rehearsals and stuff where it's like, uh, either I'm like flipping through all my music or like sometimes, you know, the physical flip folder, like the paper flip folder gets really thick because there's a lot of stands tunes and stuff to know and like have accessible and maybe the piece I'm looking for isn't in there. And so like it's a really good time saver because it saves a lot of time from just flipping through everything and maybe not having it on you. It's kind of nice that you can just like have it and it'll totally eliminate that problem. So Right, yeah. There's been things that we've sold from from like both sides, so it's both the student perspective and the band director's perspective. Um, obviously, it came from a student perspective because I was a student. But um, you know, band directors have told us as well that it's like loading one flip folder because we uh, the the app actually started by integrating into what Pit uses as a cloud storage to host their music. So they use they used Box, which is a cloud storage, and. Uh, you know, we integrate directly with that and we end up using pattern matching to figure out like what your part names are uh, and then pull it up. So it's easier to create a create like a to kind of load your band in than it would be just to drag and drop files. Um, so that's uh, that's been a big a big thing as well. And people have really enjoyed that um, that experience and the less less work I guess put into that. Uh, so um, Savannah and Annabelle, um, uh, did you guys have any specific questions, um, things that have popped up that, you know, since you are both current current members of, um, of marching bands, um, are there any things that you guys would encounter on a normal basis that, that you think that Flip Folder app could, um, could solve or just things that you guys had to ask Mark, uh, Marcus about? Um, I have one. So something that you kind of briefly talked about was um, having the ability to write to other people on your part. Um, mm -hmm. And something kind of like what Savannah said with COVID, I think that'd be really helpful. Um, you know, fortunately in my band, we were able to meet in person during, um, during the whole COVID situation. But a problem I ran into a lot as section leader was trying not to shout all across the band. You know, we were all, cause we have like a big 40 you know, member clarinet um, section. And so we were always trying to like contain our aerosols or, you know, not go up to people individually. And so something, whenever you said that, I thought it'd be really cool if I could be like, oh, measure 42, you know, and I can circle that or I can write a note being like, hey guys, you know, like that's the rhythm or, you know, like that's yeah. the dynamic. So that would be really helpful just in general, but also with COVID, um, then I don't have to travel as many places or shout, you know. Yeah, we're focusing, and that was actually released this year, that feature. Uh, and when we were focusing on COVID-related features, that was one of them. But we also looked at everything that people have been asking for, things that we've thought about and have ranked. We're like, well, this would be just useful in general, 
but it's really useful right now. Um, and that was like a top thing. That was one of the first things we worked on when the COVID pandemic uh, kind of started um, because we just knew that people would really, really like that. And yeah, the way it works is kind of like you said, you can just draw on your music and it's uh, usually about like five seconds that'll pull down everybody who has that same part. We'll see what you just drew, um, which is, uh, it's, it's been pretty used. And I, I even just normal marching operations, you have like your section leader or some student leader, draw all of the sets in your music or something. And then that just gets copied down. Mar Marcus, I was curious. So um, because I know that we had talked about this originally when we first um, met on Zoom, but that, that power saving feature, the battery um, life part of it, uh, uh, what like, can you, I guess, go into more detail about, about how that works. Um, what kind of tests did you guys do for that? And, and, and how does that work within the actual app itself? Yeah. Uh, so there's, there's really like three kind of things to talk about with, with power saving that we've, we've done. And it's been a, a huge focus uh, from kind of this app's creation. Um, first of all, just the fact that the app is made from the ground up from scratch. Um, we've been able to really control, you know, the things like an Android user interfaces that might have possibly been really resource intensive. We're not, we're not using that. We're using something else or stuff like that has been something that we've really tested. Um, but the kind of the features to talk about are things like uh, we have an actual built in power save mode. So just like uh, band directors can pull up music to everybody on the band, they can turn on power save mode and that darkens all of the screen for all of all of the band members. Uh, and that actually saves like that, that's the 90% of the work because if you've uh, ever done or looked into this, so you probably just know this, uh, your phone doesn't use too much power when the screen's off, right? And, and the screen being on is really what uses most of the power. It could be like, you know, doing cryptocurrency mining or whatever. And what would use power is just the screen being on um, because that screen is, is, is like really resource intensive. So just being able to turn that off when you're not performing is, is saves a lot of battery. Uh, but additionally for super old phones, um, we also have a dark mode built in uh, that inverts the things it needs to invert uh, so that you can still you can still kind of read your music and read the notations. Um, and that uh, that that is great for, you know, we've, we test every single release on an iPhone 4 and like super old phones that have been been out for a while. And uh, we've we've really not run into any issues with with battery life on those. Um, and it's, yeah, that's, that's a primary focus of us because we know that every band member is going to have a different device, especially if you're doing a bring your own device model and we want to make sure it's going to work well on everybody's phone. Uh, what about over the course of a game and like in, in, uh, you know, inclement weather or bad weather situations? Um, how does they, um, uh, like, like, like what can be used with that in order to continue to use the phone, but also, you know, avoid it getting drenched or wet or, or, you know, possibly getting destroyed in any sort of way. Yeah. Yeah. We all hate soggy paper, right? That's what normally happened with the, with the paper <laughs> flip folders. Um, and yeah, the cool thing about phones is, I mean, if your phone's waterproof already, then you're good. Um, but we, there are, there are very, very cheap phone pouches you can get, or you can honestly just use a sandwich bag. Uh, and put it around your phone. And uh, that allow you to use your phone still and see your music and you can click through those things fine, uh, especially if you get one that's made for phones. Um, we have, we actually have uh, waterproof pouches that we, we can sell and you can put your school logo on them. Um, and and uh, those have been, those have been pretty, uh, those, those people have really liked those as well. Um, and you can touch through those and everything works fine and um, the water just slides right off of it. That definitely sounds better. I have used a sandwich bag before um i'm sure savannah you you i'm sure you guys have a ton of rain where you're from um <laughs> yeah. but we had a yeah we had a game in kentucky and I, I i take our pictures so i had to put my phone in a sandwich bag just to take our pictures and it rained so bad we only played one song um because the music got drenched uniforms they got drenched so bad they molded um like our gauntlets wow. it was so <laughs> we were in the rain for like six hours it was terrible um, that sounds cool. And I'm sure like the schools love that individual logo feature too. Yeah. It's just yeah. more branding. Yeah, totally. Put, put, I mean, that's marching bands, right? You just put, you put the school logo on every single thing that you wear. So might as well put it on the music as well. <laughs> I'm curious to know, like, how, do you know how bands have been like specifically about like an, an instrument's lyre, like where a flip folder, physical flip folder would go? As, is there, would that just be like replaced with the phone or is there like a different kind of liar that you need to get to like accommodate the yeah, phone or anything? Yeah, you need some like sort that? of electronic, uh, there's, there's, there's uh, another company that makes them, but we also make them. Um, cool. And they're these, they're these uh, phone holders that uh, work in three different ways. 
We have one, and I have them here. I thought that might be a question. We have one that goes on a liar. Um, and this one, as you can see, it has that normal kind of paper flow folder uh, thing on the bottom. Oh, that's there. Cool. Um, nice. And this one, you know, it's got a phone holder that just is spring loaded. So you can just kind of take your phone and like slide it in there. And then it's good. Um, and we also have, uh, we have one for trombones that goes around the bell. Um, and then you can adjust these two nuts here to kind of uh, if you like your phone close to your face, you can do that or you can put it on the bell and flush with the bell and not block any additional peripheral vision because that is a problem for trombone players because I am a trombone player. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we also have one for uh, flutes or sousaphones um, or anybody who wants to put their phone on their wrist. Right. So there's three different things you can do. That, that covers a lot of the scenarios um, that, you, that you find. And uh, we recommend that if you're like uh, a drum line um, that you just use, a, maybe if you have them available, like a tablet on a music stand um, and you know, that's, that's been a good solution as well uh, for, for those. And actually for concert ensembles as well, using tablets on music stands uh, and using this app is, is really, really works out. Uh, how, how easy is it um, or has it been for you guys to adapt the app into different um, forms because, or like uses, because obviously you use it for March Man, And I know that um, if you want to talk about it a little bit further, I know that um, some of those beta uh, test bands that you were working with also used it in pep band. But how has it been, um, like, how have you been able to adapt and use it in different ways, like, um, you know, possibly uh, uh, orchestra, concert band, choir, things like that? Yeah, well, there's a few things, you know, if you think about, for example, a choir, um, they don't have individual parts most of the time, usually they have a score. So, you know, we can, we can adapt to the way that music is shared and make it so that, uh, it, in fact, it's almost, uh, it's almost even better because you can really, the, even the instructor could draw on the music and have that shared to everybody because it's the same part. Um, but, you know, things like page turning instead of scrolling um, and, and, you know, kind of small things, small changes just to make it more better for those, those ensembles is, is things that we've been working on. Um, and we're currently testing this with a couple of concert bands and a, and a choir and an orchestra. Um, to really kind of focus on all of those scenarios and, and really make sure we have a perfect solution for, um, for you know, every, every environment. Um, and one thing to mention along that, those lines as well is, you know, if, you, if you're a, a sit-down ensemble, using a phone might not be as effective because putting your phone on a music stand is, uh, it'd be hard to read. And just, let's just be honest, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you can use, you know, tablets, as I said, or we do have a web version of the app, which works the same way as the, the version that runs on phones. Um, so you can, you can use like a Chromebook or a, a laptop of some kind or, you know, a, with a bigger screen uh, to read your music as well. Have, oh, 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 wait, sorry, Annabelle. Uh, no, I was <laughs> just going to mention, um, like, that, that sounds like such a good idea because I know... Like, so currently my high school back home, um, they just went back online. And so they've gone back and forth and back and forth. Um, and so the first they started online and then they went in person and then they're online again. And so I can't imagine from like third band choir, you know, the band or choir director's perspective, how like hard that is getting music out. Um, yeah. Cause one, like, you know, you're unexpectedly go online due, due to COVID, you know, you go to school one day and the next, you know, you're not there. Um, and, you know, not everyone really has access to printers, so you can, you know, scan the music if, you know, if that's legal with that, you know, composer, and then email mm -hmm. to them, but, you know, not every student has a printer at home. So that definitely seems like some, like a cool way to do it, because I know most schools, what they're, or at least like in my area, what they're all trying to move to, so like every student has an iPad, or every student has a computer that they can then take home. Um, and I know that would definitely be handy, like in band required situations with the whole, you know, in and out of school or traveling, even post COVID. Yeah, I mean, suddenly this year, right, every single like music person, music education person has needed, needed electronic music. They've needed some solution to use. Um, and we've, we've definitely tried to our best to be that solution in, in, in a lot of cases. Um, yeah, and another thing you mentioned was like, if it's legal to scan the music, if the composer allows you to. Uh, and that's a question we get a lot. And if anybody's listening here is thinking about using this, please feel free to email us at uh, support at flipfolderapp.com because we, uh, we've actually got communication with a lot of music publishers on what you can and can't do, which is maybe a little bit more specific than you trying to read their fine print. Um, so if you want us to point you in the right direction with, you know, Cal Leonard, whatever it might be, uh, please send us an email because we, we've, uh, we've definitely got that communication and we can, we can help you figure that out. Uh, on the subject of COVID, how has it been with, um, you know, with dealing with 
what's going on with COVID and not a lot of marching bands uh, being in person, meeting, um, either, you know, having online Zoom meetings or just not meeting at all. How is how have you guys adapted to the situation, especially this year, based on what you guys did um, uh, in starting in, you know, 2018, 2019 up until now? Yeah. So, you know, we, we kind of focused uh, for a couple of weeks. Um, we, we kind of sat down and said, well, what can we do to help right now? And what, what can we put into uh, flip folder app to really help with what's going on? Um, so we did a few things. First of all, we kind of, we, we, the way that flip folder app works is it works. Uh, if you're in person, it connects over Bluetooth. And if you're not, it connects over the internet. So obviously we scaled up the internet because we knew that that was going to be what people use, especially if they're, if they're further apart or if they're, um, if they're, across the world, you know, uh, or across the United States at least. Um, but then we, you know, we added things like I was talking about with the shared notations, which actually is even a good thing for teaching music because the director can circle something in their part and the person they're teaching who normally they would have had like a music stand and they would have been pointing at the music stand. Instead, they're, you know, drawing in their music, they're circling something and that's just coming up on their device, you know, across the United States, wherever it might be. Um, so yeah, really just using the power of the internet to solve problems like we all have this year has been our, our primary focus. I have a follow-up question to that. So with you said of the internet, um, so my band, we practiced at a parking lot um, kind of off campus that's painted like a football field. So has like Flip Folder done anything? Um, so, like, so where our practice field is, um, sometimes the internet's really spotty. And, mm -hmm. so, and so we currently use some like online devices um, like UDB and stuff like that for attendance and drill, but it doesn't always work. So how is like flip folder trying to work past like the internet connection problem for bands, you know, that aren't always inside? Right. Yeah, no, the, the, that's actually a huge thing with flip folder app. We have something called, uh, we, work, we call it band tooth. Um, it's not trademarked. <laughs> But anyway, what that does is... You could is, trademark it. I, you could, but I, I refuse to. So uh, anyway, uh, <laughs> how it works is you might imagine that it uses Bluetooth. And um, yeah, so if your band is, you know, whether it, you have a cell phone tower right next to you or you're in the middle of absolutely nowhere, the app works exactly the same, uh, which is really cool. Um, so even the, not just manually using the device, the band director can still select a song and have it come up automatically. Albeit it might be a little slower. It'd be like 10 seconds as opposed to three seconds, but it's going to work across, you know, that, that area, that local network. Uh, the way that it works is if you think of like a spider web connects, you know, all these different places, it's basically connecting every device together in, a, in like a mesh um, where you're located, like physically. Um, and that's how it, like it dispatches messages or, or songs or whatever across that network. Um, so it would work whether you have internet or not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely seems handy. Um, so something within like marching was something that we've had to combat is that since we are in person, um, for the members who are in quarantine to still get like their attendance, they have to zoom in to band. Um, so we have a, a graduate assistant who stands at the top of a, their tower with their phone and right. you know they just sit there and listen to the band but it's not like you can really practice along because you know zoom lags and all of that so that would mm -hmm. definitely be an advantage i see um if you do have the flip folder app and you do have students in quarantine who can't be there they can follow along yeah. you know with exactly. rehearsal and yeah, not just have to sit there through a zoom <laughs> yeah there's there's some features we're releasing very soon to help even more with that so we mentioned bringing up like uh individual songs for people. Um, we're also adding a thing where the band director can select measures and have that come up. Um, so then really like, oh, work on this section. And then instead of you trying to find it, it's just it's there, he brought it up, you know? And that's, uh, that's something that, uh, that is being released very soon that, that should help out as well. I just imagined, uh, you know, I think what I've seen a few bands do it, the same scenario you're in is they'll mention something over, you know, Zoom, like, oh, you got to work on this section. And whoever's quarantined, they'll be in charge of like notating it. So they'll be like, oh, yeah, that's the circle this. Here's the sets. And I thought that was super cool. I thought that was a, a cool way of kind of uh, using, you know, um, those extra brains you got that are unfortunately stuck at home. I was I was a little bit curious talking about um, the I guess like going through the actual song itself. Does so does Flip Folder app I guess like read through it as if you were reading through it, or is it you still have to scroll up and down through the actual pieces themselves? Yeah, there's that's definitely something that we have. Um, we spent a lot of time thinking about, and we definitely have prototypes um, for like automatically kind of scrolling the music. 
um, you know, the, the biggest thing we want to make sure is that you still have manual control in case the conductor stops or they're going at a strange tempo. And, you know, the fact that marching band tempos are already tremendously inconsistent most of the time uh, <laughs> makes it a problem. So, yeah, what happens right now is that it stacks the music vertically. And um, if it's a single page piece, uh, you can normally just see everything on the one screen. Or if not, you know, you basically like you would do a page turn, you're just going to scroll down. Um, and because it stacks it vertically, you can actually be in between pages if you need to. Um, so you can, you can position the music. So in case you have a bad page turn, that's no longer a bad page turn because uh, you can see both pages. So Yeah, I, I, I don't know about band people, but definitely within the choir world, um, whenever we're recording stuff, we actually have to practice page turns. So we'll have to sit there for a minute and be like, okay, everyone, and then you have to practice doing it quietly. That way it doesn't come up on the recording, um, right. which I think is always kind of a funny moment, but it's like something you never really think about until you're there. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's certainly like uh, some, it's, it's always been a problem. And, uh, and I think it's been really cool, honestly. And this is one of the things I love about it, that not only are we kind of making it so that just the transition to electronic music is easier, but there's problems that musical ensembles have had for decades, right? Like since musical ensembles were a thing with, with you know, Western sheet music, <laughs> um, or even other types of sheet music, I guess. Uh, and and that's, been, that's been really exciting to kind of reinvent that and, and solve those really big problems that have existed for a while when you, so when you guys first when you when you first kind of introduced this into the pit band uh how quickly um did did word travel outside of of pit about what you were doing and how much were people you know like like how often were people going up to you and asking you um you know from other bands across the country um you know more about what you were doing and you know possibly asking it for themselves and then once you actually started beta testing with bands and different colleges uh how uh, how was the feedback that they gave you uh positive or negative yeah i mean it was it was i i love band kids and i love band directors they're always very positive people uh especially you know i remember beta testing and having you know a band director on the phone because it just wasn't working on their device and him just being super like you know kind of nice with about it and you know, anyway, we've gotten past that now. That's not still a problem. But uh, yeah, no, it, we had that first year when it was when we were just keeping it in the in pit. Um, we had lots of lots of bands reach out. Um, and it was very surprising to me. And I think that's really what gave me the idea uh, to make it a business and to, uh, you know, sell it to other colleges was the band directors basically saying like, hey, we want to use this. Like, it wasn't until that point that I really saw that route. Um, because, you know, I'm a tech guy, I'm not a business guy. So, mm. um, but that was, uh, that was, yeah, really exciting. And, and to be, to be honest, that first year when we were beta testing, um, we added tremendous number of features that they just requested. Like, you know, they were just like, Hey, this would be really cool. And we're like, yeah, we agree. And then we added it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that's how power saving came about. That's how the dark mode stuff happened. It was, you know, that's, um, you know, we, we really think that those people drive the idea and push it forward. And we, we always like having relationships with the band directors and with the students to, to really kind of make the product better and make the whole, whole experience better. Yeah. Um, so with that, so I know like this just kind of started out with you, you know, on your computer trying to solve, you know, pit bands problem. So, it has, so how big is the company now? And then like, how are you guys growing? Is it just like word of mouth between band directors or, you know, like how are you guys trying to reach more bands both within the US and like globally? Yeah, we've done um, a few conferences, um, but yeah, honestly, it's been a lot of word of mouth. Um, as I said before, band directors talk, even across conferences, they talk. Um, and, you know, that's been tremendous. And, and to, that's, uh, to be completely honest, that's where, almost all of, uh, of our current customers have come from is that route. Um, and, you know, it really kind of is nice for me because I know them and I speak with them and sometimes they have my personal phone number. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's really gotten good to have that connection and not to kind of lose track of where, where things are going. Um, but yeah, right now it's, it's just a small team maintaining this. Um, we, we've not had any issues with maintaining it with uh, the size that we are. And uh, we hope to just keep making the app better for everybody. Uh, what's the pricing structure like um, for, for bands itself or just for individual students? How is that? How have you guys um, created that and what different points? price points do you guys have um, to, um, to make it as affordable as possible for kids wanting to use it? Yeah, so normally what happens is the organization will pay. Um, we do have some where the students pay and it, we usually it goes through the organization and then, then to us. But uh, we have two models 
there are some, especially in high school, there are some musical programs that will only meet for a couple months in a year. And we want to make sure that they're not overpaying. So we do have a monthly model um, where you can pay uh, $2 a month uh, per kid um, to get everybody access. Um, and then if you are someone who uses it for the full year, uh, we do uh, $10 a band member a year. Um, so that works out, you know, depending on whether you meet just a couple months or you meet for the entire year. And, you know, you don't have to create separate ensembles for like your marching band and your pet band and, and stuff like that. So they can all be in one thing, you know, especially if they have the same students. And, uh, and yeah, it's, it's honestly kind of a per student basis. That's how the pricing works. Uh, and um, I guess one thing I was curious about, so obviously you now partnering with us being, being you know, sponsoring the podcast, um, how did the idea come about? How did um, talks with you and Michael start about, you know, getting you involved with us uh, and, and just like the process of that from your end? Yeah, funnily enough, a, uh, a band director, I, won't, I don't know if he wants to be named, so I won't name him, but okay. a band director <laughs> that we work with reached out to Michael saying, hey, this is, if you're looking for some extra content this year with, you know, kind of to separate the whole, this, <laughs> this conference canceled, this conference canceled on the, you know, on the, <laughs> on the college marching side of things. Um, they said, hey, you can, you can reach out to this person who's, who's been, you know, working on, on an app that's been kind of solving a lot of these problems. And uh, yeah, Michael reached out to me. I reached out to him and we, we talked. Um, Michael wrote up a really good article on Flip Folder App on collegemarching.com uh, that uh, is really kind of the first kind of step on that relationship that we had. Uh, and now I'm just super excited to be sponsoring this and to, to kind of be sponsoring what's going on there. Um, sounds like, you know, I think this is just the, this is the world that I love and I love being a part of it. And um, I guess... Yeah, no, it's it's a it's a crazy world. Um, uh, this um, the last question for me at least is uh, I don't know if this was just previously asked, but but what's next? What is you know where do you guys go from here? Yeah, well, you know we have we have different plans depending on what ends up happening with the pandemic and 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 such. But we certainly want to make sure we provide um, better solutions for the marching arts. Um, but we're also branching out into, as I said, multiple ensembles. So we would love to, um, you know, bring the same technology into uh, sit down ensembles or choirs or orchestras. Uh, and we're, as, as I said, we're working with those different, uh, different kind of, you know, universes, <laughs> I'll say, to, uh, to solve their just individual problems. Um, so that's honestly the goal uh, for the future is just to reach reach out into those different different places and uh, make sure that we're providing a good solution for everybody. Do you guys do you guys have any other questions for Marcus? No, generally, I think it's yeah, I think it's a great idea. I think it's gonna fix a lot of people's headaches, a lot of directors' headaches. And um, I was wondering, do you happen to know how many like bands or organizations are currently using Flip Folder? I'm just personally curious. Yeah, it's 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 greater than forty. Um, bands right now and that's this different schools and we definitely have some that are using it across multiple ensembles um and those are the ones that we're working with to make sure that the, the app works well on you know acquire um but yeah it's around it's around it's more than 40. that's cool it sounds like you know it sounds like a great program for me i personally was a little hesitant because you know like once you like use paper music you think you know that's the only thing um especially like if you've always grown up with that so it's kind of hard to like you know, I think that there's other things that you can use or to, you know, switch, but it definitely seems like a great program that can definitely solve a lot of issues, especially, you know, during this time. Yeah, well, thank yeah. you. I think personally, like as a piccolo player, the the liar and flip folder setup is a little bit tricky sometimes. So I was really, I think it's really cool that there's different kind of designs for the liars and stuff where it's, you know, you think about a traditional flute liar and it's kind of, you know, pretty big pieces of paper in your face but like just having the phone on your wrist would be really nice yeah yeah and people have done that already with like uh you know sprinters bands and stuff um so that also works if that's you know that's the solution you want to go with but um yeah it's it's much lighter than a, than a flip folder believe it or not um especially phones nowadays you know if you have a real bulky one with an otter box case or something maybe not as much but um you know with marching bands like you you put a lot of music in those uh if you're if you're a not a school that memorizes music. It's thick. <laughs> yeah. So so it's it's lighter than that, and um, that's also solved other problems. Um, I know on trombones, for example, used to be used to have to clip your paper music onto the bell, and a problem that we had at least at Pitt was that would actually bend the bell over time because it was so heavy. Um, so yeah, we did we solved that in two ways. First of all, we're no longer clipping it onto the bell; we're grabbing around the bell. We're we're kind of clamping onto it, um, but also just the fact that the phone is lighter, so it really helps.
Well, um, Marcus, if people are interested, if bands, programs are interested in 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 uh, you know, being a part of Flip Folder app, getting the app for their program. Um, where can people find both you and Flip Folder app itself? Sure. Yeah. So if you go to flipfolderapp.com or if you shorthand, you can type in flipfolder.app. Um, the easiest way to get in touch is we have a form on that website uh, that you can fill out just describing who you are, uh, put in your email. Um, and there's, you know, basically ask like, any of your questions there and we can set up a one-on-one -on -one demo um, to kind of walk through what it looks like and you know make sure that we're providing a solution that will work for you and, and for your organization so definitely recommend doing that especially if you're looking to um, you know looking into solutions you can use for the following year um, uh, you know we're always open to speaking with directors and we're, we're happy to do that um, and if you want to just email instead uh, you can email support at flipfolderapp.com um, so either of those things work. We, we, I definitely think the form is probably the easiest way though. Right. That it basically has all the questions that we would just immediately ask. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, um, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much for taking the time to do this, Marcus. We really, really appreciate you, um, uh, you know, sponsoring the podcast, you, you now being a part of what we're doing and I'm sure that we're going to have you on future podcasts, but uh, thank you so much for doing this. And, and we yeah, can't, you know, we, we can't express how much, this is, you know, like this means to us to have someone, you know, have faith in us to continue to do this. Um, Marcus, thank you. Thank you so much for doing this um, uh, in, in coming on and talking to us about, um, about Flip Folder app and sponsoring the podcast. Uh, and yeah, of course. Yeah. And um, thanks and, for having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, and for, um, and for everyone listening. Uh, uh, so this is the end of our 10th episode. Uh, again, uh, we wanted to, um, you know, thank Marcus for taking the time to do this and thank everyone else for listening and watching. Um, for those that don't know, you can find college band radio. We're on Twitter at college band RDO. Uh, and, and we're also on Instagram at college band radio. You can also find us on YouTube at college band radio. I know Marcus, uh, sub just subscribed to the YouTube channel a couple days ago. So yes, follow, so follow Marcus's lead and go subscribe to the YouTube channel. And, um, yeah, and we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, hopefully other uh, podcast um, uh, places and, and ways to listen soon. So um, from all of us, uh, thank you so uh, – thanks so much for listening. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Please wear a mask, and we'll talk to you guys next week.